Hey guys, um, as we're trying to figure out our way forward through this, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, I want to call it a time, but you know, like for instance, the state that I'm in, the governor wants to continue things past Corona. So I guess maybe that might not be the most accurate description. Um, as we're trying very unsuccessfully to navigate the storm that we're all in. Aha, how about that? Um, there are a few things that have happened. Um, collateral damage. Um, unfortunate side effects. Uh, that... I just want to spend a few minutes talking about them and then talking about a, a way to, to resolve them. Um, because, okay, it's, you know whatever health practices you're, you're doing or not doing, whatever, that, that's, that's, that's really your call. But there is something we need to be doing about these collateral issues or else they could become catastrophic issues. Uh, the first thing is, according to the, to the director of the CDC, um, he, we're seeing in the high schools that, that age group um, suicide and drug overdoses way higher than coronavirus deaths. Like, just way higher. And um, that's something that we need to consider. It's something that can't be ignored. Um, even in among adults, suicide is extremely high. Drug overdose, uh, domestic violence, all these things are extremely high. Um, it's just it's just very, um, very unfortunate. And the, the place that I live, um, they've actually put, in a, uh, put, put a higher, um, uh, what's it called? higher um, priority to um, water restrictions and to health restrictions than they actually have to domestic violence. Um, there was a case here uh, that was being filed for uh, a domestic violence uh, case, and rather than letting the police take care of that, the mayor, who, anyways, um, decided to have the police go tell people not to use their water that they're paying for. So I really think that there's kind of a disconnect here where we're not taking things seriously. Um, yeah, st staying safe, that, that, that's great. Uh, conserving water, hey, this is all great. But what about, what about suicides? What about domestic violence? What about drug overdoses? What about these things? You know, we can't just ignore them. They're only getting worse. And um, at this point, well, I guess that's just my own opinion. I'm just trying to stay away from my own opinion. So, okay. Uh, you know, so this is, this, is, this is kind of a big issue. And this isn't something that, oh, well, maybe that's accurate. No, this is something the CDC director himself was saying. Okay, so just this needs to be considered. So what are some things we can do? First off, if you're struggling with, with something, I mean, there's nothing I can do really to convince you. It has to be your choice, but please, please, please get help. Um, you might say, oh, well, there's no one to help me. There, there are ways. You can, um, you can call anonymously. You can message um, by your computer anonymously. You can send text messages to certain places. Um, call some a, a family friend, a family, anything. It, it's better to get coronavirus and get sick than it is to stay alone in your house and die. I mean, it, it, there's there, there, there's got to be a way that that I can convince you, hopefully, not not to give up. I, I don't know what way to do that, but please, if there's if there's anything that you can do, please try it before you try that. That that's a final solution, and it's not even a solution. It's a final decision for a very temporary problem and there might be better ways and you don't know what's out there you know oh well it's just going to get worse what if it doesn't what if it just gets better you know and just if there's any any way that you can find help please do um, if you're dealing with addictions please 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 get help don't walk through that dark alley by yourself and uh, if you are not someone who's doing this, but maybe you know people in your community, find a way to connect with them. I, I know the social distancing and all these different things. I get that. But sh maybe there's some way that you can still connect with them. Maybe you can do FaceTime. Maybe you can um, meet somewhere in the 
where there's open air or something, and then each of you wear a mask or something. There's got to be some way. Um, write them a letter. Uh, start be a pen pal. Hey, you'd be like, hey, um, you don't know me, but you know whatever. Hey, let's 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 just write and talk and be friends. You know, it, it's oh, it's okay. I know. Oh well, that's awkward. Is it better to be a little bit awkward or to allow somebody to die? I mean, there, there's got to be something we can do here. This is a very unfortunate side effect, and the thing is, is it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. This is something that we really have to deal with. Um, ignoring is not helping. Um, another thing, an, an, an really terrible side effect that's happened from the different things that are going on is people have kind of become very unsafe with their driving. Um, you really want to make sure that you observe the, the, the rules of the road. Uh, don't cut people off. Don't drive at intense speeds. Even if you don't get a ticket, that's not the point. It's about keeping people safe. Uh, I don't know if I said this already, but don't text or talk on the phone while you're driving. Um, don't uh, don't swerve at bikers. <laughs> um, I have every single day that I go biking, I have people swerving at me. Um, and it's just, you know, be be nice to people, you know. Um, practice safe safe driving. If somebody, if somebody cuts you off, hey, eh, it's okay. Let it go. And if you could move over before waiting to the last minute, then move over before waiting to the last minute. Find ways to be safer when you're driving because here's the thing. A lot of people die in car accidents. And with the way people are driving right now, we're only going to see that go up. Now, obviously, I don't have statistics on that yet because the year's not up yet. So um, that's why this one and for the um, – um, there was another one I didn't have uh, statistics on. But this one's good enough, so why not? Um, please remember there are other people on the road. You don't own the road. It's not all about you. You're not the only one who's frustrated. You're not the only one who's dealing with it. Just we're all dealing with this. So maybe find a way to um, find a different release um, for your anger or your fear, whatever you're feeling. Find a way to release that in a creative way that doesn't involve driving insane. <coughs> and uh, then there's another kind of issue, and that's the issue of stress. You know, I think we're all stressed. We're all going through different things. And... One of the ways that people have been dealing with stress is through smoking. Now, now this statistic is not taking into account people who started back up on smoking or um, who increased their smoking this year. It, this is not from this year because, once again, this year is not over yet. I know, right? Um, every year in the U.S., 480,000 people die of smoking. That's according to the CDC. Um I mean, we listen to them about a lot of other stuff. I don't see a reason to doubt them on this. Um, okay, so 480,000 people a year. That means, as of today, in the U.S., there's only been 163,000 people who died of coronavirus. And that number is debated by some people because of how they're counting up the COVID deaths and all those different things. I'm not really going to get into that. I'm not really going to argue that. I'm just taking the official number, 162,000 people dying. That means at this point and at this rate, we are seeing still smoking being a bigger cause of death than coronavirus. Now, I'm not trying to discount coronavirus, but what I am saying is find a creative way to de-stress besides smoking. If your de-stressor is killing you, find a different way. Yeah, I know it's hard to give up an addiction, especially at a time like this, but check it out, though. Smoking is killing you faster than coronavirus will. And not only that, but smoking weakens your lungs, and coronavirus is a respiratory illness. So if you continue to smoke, it's just going to make it where if you do get corona, it's probably going to be harder for your body to overcome it. So these are things to consider. Please consider, and please just think about it. Think about doing something else instead of smoking. Uh, go for a walk instead. Uh, you know, if you feel like smoking, chew gum. I mean, gum's not great for you, but I mean, it's better than it's better than this. Find 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 a better way is what I'm saying. Um, another another side effect is poor service. Um, a lot of the businesses and places you know that, that people are going to, mediocrity is just becoming a standard. You know, doing their job very poorly, not showing up to work at, at on time, not doing their work, everything's delayed. And the thing is, a lot of it could be done correctly. If we would just put forth the effort and remember that people are going to remember after the fact how you acted now. I, I know there's a few restaurants that I've decided I'm not interested in supporting them. They 
you know, if they if they want to operate like that, that that's fine. I'm just not interested in giving my my hard hard earned money. I just, sit. I'm not interested in giving my hard earned money to them when they're not doing their job correctly. You know, when you when you put an order in and they give you a re severely reduced portion that looks bad and is burnt and has a bunch of rotten food, and then it took you like an hour and a half to get it to me. I'm all for supporting businesses. I really am. But I'm supporting you, and I expect you to do the job that I'm paying you for. And if you're going to give me poor service, then I'll find someone else who's who's willing to give me good service. And there's been numerous restaurants that have really stepped up at this time. Uh, some of my favorite restaurants um, who were, you know, had good quality before. I mean, there, there's one here um, who had way too high of prices. And poor service, and so then coronavirus hit, and their prices only went up, and their service only went down, and you know, so people are going to remember that. Remember that that the, the people will remember. Um, instead, find a way to do everything that you do with excellence. Do it with excellence, and anything that you have to do, always do it to the best of your ability, um, because coronavirus won't last forever, but the habits that you create, they will last for forever. So, um, disrespect. You, you see this on online. You see this in person. You see it really everywhere. I mean, there was one one place in a city near near where I'm living, where somebody wasn't wearing a mask, and so somebody took off their mask and spit in their face. If you don't see a problem with that, I, that's kind of my point. We need to treat people with respect, even if they don't agree with us. See what I mean? Like we have this idea that if you're not, if you're not, if you're not supporting my view, you're part of the problem, and I will not tolerate. What happened to all this coexist tolerate nonsense that we were hearing before? You know, going from one extreme, tolerate everything, to now a complete exact exact opposite extreme, tolerate nothing. There's got to be a more healthy way to process that. Maybe we can let there be truth and not treat all views as though they are equal. I mean, like for instance. Um, KKK's views probably aren't equal with another person's view who says, hey, I'm going to love and serve somebody. Okay, but then you don't have to go to the other extreme and say, hey, no other views but my own. I mean, maybe there's a more healthy balance. Maybe we can have truth and niceness and respect and all these things together. I wouldn't it be just fantastic. So uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, here's just a real quick tip. Don't say anything at all. You see something on Facebook you don't like? Keep going. Because you're not going to change anybody's opinion. You're just going to start a fight and then damage from relationships. And it's not its not really going to do anything. So just move on. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it. Uh, and then the mask situation. I know there's a lot of people upset right that, about that right now because of some states requiring it. And it just – whole thing with – how people are dealing with it. And here's the thing. If somebody's not wearing a mask or is wearing a mask and you don't like it, mind your own business. You have to accept at some point in your life, you have to accept the fact that you can't control everyone else and people are going to do something you don't like. So what you do when somebody does something you don't like? You... <sighs> oh, well. And move on. If you want to avoid them in the store, avoid them in the store. Whatever. But there has to be a point when you say, you know what? I don't have to micromanage everybody who walks into the store. I don't have to micromanage everybody who's walking down the street. You know, there has to be a point where that's the thing. You know, I see some people who don't believe in masks, and they're and they're saying, "Hey, moron, don't drive with your mask on." Now, I I, I would say, okay, yeah, you probably shouldn't be driving with your mask on because of just recirculating air when it's just you in the car. But I mean, I'm not gonna pull you over and call you a moron, but then you have other people on the other side, hey, you're going to kill us all by not wearing a mask, and it's like, oh, okay, let's, let's all take it down a couple notches, and that's really, I think, what, what the biggest issue is, is that everything has gone from this to up here, you know, before people were depressed and, you know, struggling in life, well, now, ah! you know, people were driving a little bit, a little bit rough, a little pushing it when they did, ah, let's all drive crazy, you know, people were smoking, ah, let's smoke a lot, and it's like, you know, so basically, maybe maybe moderation is a good idea. Maybe balance. Maybe learning new practices. So let's just do a real quick recap. Uh, either find help or be the person who brings help to others. 
Um, remember that life isn't all about you and to watch out for other people on the road. I mean, if you're willing, especially if you're willing, one of those people who's willing to wear a mask for the safety of others and then you drive like you're freaking crazy, maybe there needs to be more balance there. Um, if, if you're having a problem with stress, find a healthy way to, way to de-stress that doesn't involve um, something as deadly as smoking. Um, because as you can see there, that, that's, a, that's a big, big difference, really big difference. So um, remember to do things to the best of your ability, continue to grow, continue to learn. Remember to treat people nice and to not say anything if you don't have anything nice to say. Uh, and then remember that you're not everybody else's boss. You're your own boss. You take care of you. Um, so okay, I hope that these, these things were helpful. Um, there's obviously other things that I could have mentioned. But let's stop pointing out problems everywhere and let's start working on the problems. I brought up the problem problems, but then I said, okay, these are things that we're ignoring that we need to start addressing. So maybe that's a better way to approach it of how can I do my part to fix what I can? And uh, so, okay, uh, see ya.